Let's talk Utah Jazz basketball here on the Monty Show. Your Utah Jazz. While we pound at Gordon's ass. Put it on tape or it didn't happen. Uh, the Jazz 120, the uh, Charlotte Hornets 102. Lori Markinen leads the Jazz with 25 points and 11 boards. It's a good win. This is exactly what you needed from this Jazz team. Um, I think Lori Markinen, again, is proving why he's an all-star. I think he's proving why he's a guy that belongs in that game in his own building, absolutely. Um, and one of the things that I thought was so interesting was the lineup mix that Will Hardy used. Because I think you're seeing on a week-to-week almost basis, there's a guy who sits in the doghouse, a, a, a different dude every week it feels like. Yeah. Right now it's NAW. Nikhil Alexander-Walker can't get off the bench for the Jazz. Um, he comes in last night and he plays four minutes of, of messy basketball at the end of the game. He's a minus seven and he <laughs> scores four points. <laughs> The good news is Doak got in as well. Wow. Yudoka Azabuki, Fact. four minutes, no points. He was a minus seven, as was Fontecchio, as was Balmero. But right now, what like are you surprised that Nikhil Alexander Walker isn't playing regular rotational minutes? I, I mean, yeah, a little bit. I mean, I I felt like he earned his spot, but I mean, I I don't know. Clearly, there's a there's a you know a bigger plan, and this is this is you know this could be the impact of the looming trade deadline. I mean, it could be that that NAW is a guy they're going to keep either way, uh, most likely, and so they don't feel the need to play him right now. They they need to play guys and show guys value, you know? And and to me, I, it could be that. It could be that that maybe Hardy saw something on NAW he wasn't a big fan of. I, I, I honestly right. don't know, you know? Like, there's multiple reasons it could be that you don't want to play him, but I, what I can tell you is... I, I think NAW is the hardest worker on the team when it comes to in-game. I think NAW runs his ass off all night when you do play him, and he works hard on defense. And, you know, I, I think that NAW has been nothing short of uh, one of the best team guys that, that the organization's had in a minute. So to me, I, I, I'm, t I'm sitting here saying, logically speaking, there would be, there has to be a reason why NAW is not getting minutes right now when you were just busy running him out there for 25 or 30 a night right. the past two and a half weeks. Like, I, like there's clearly a reason. And, hey, maybe maybe it's a low-key injury. Maybe they're just maintenancing him. I, I, I really don't know. But to me, uh, yeah, I, it is a little surprising you're not you're not playing him more than four minutes. Like, yeah. You know? You know, and I, but I, I look at the rotations, and the thing that really stands out to me as we look at these lineups, obviously Ochai Baji has earned minutes. I mean, just on the fact that he is an incredible athlete, his ability to shoot that corner three has clearly gotten him into favor uh, with Will Hardy, and his effort is high. I'm for real. But does that mean that NAW can't play at all? At, at, the answer is I don't think so. But I also think this is the second half of our jazz conversation today. Trades need to happen because mm -hmm. now you have this this kind of log jam. You, you've always been guard heavy on this team, right? Now, with the addition of THT, obviously Ochai, obviously NAW, and that doesn't even account for the, you know, the the Mike Conleys and the Threesley or Beasley, whatever you would like to refer to him as. Right, thanks, Holly. It, yeah, Appreciate it, doesn't, it. Yeah, it doesn't account for Malik Beasley. Like, you've always been guard heavy on this team. And then you have a guy like, you know, a, a Laurie Markkinen who should be playing power forward, but he's much more of a three, right? So it creates these awkward situations in the lineup. I think trades have to happen because no matter how well this team is playing now, no matter what this stretch of home games yields for you, you need guys like Ochai Akbaji to get a, start, a, a, a shot at starting and playing 30 minutes. And if he, he proves not to be ready for that, great, reduce him. You need a guy like NAW to make or break on this club because you need to know what you have moving forward because I don't think any of us question Ochai Agbaji is a guy you want to see more from. I think Nikhil Alexander-Walker is a guy you want to see more from because playing him four minutes or zero minutes a game is not developing him. Send him down to the stars. Let him play it. Let him go play it here at the Mavericks Center. You know, like, let's see him play heavy minutes. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the top end of these guys is, Jake, because I think that's how you figure out development. Yeah, and I, I think they're they're working on finding the balance between developing guys that they know are going to be here and, and, you know, playing guys that they know they want to trade. And, and that's, see, like, that's the Jordan Clarkson conundrum. That's the, the conundrum for, uh, you know, a couple of these guys is, like, 
you know, if tomorrow Jordan Clarkson suffers a season-ending injury, well, obviously now you can't trade him, you know? So to me, it's like if you're going to sit NAW, then I would be very careful with Jordan Clarkson. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. w- because again, I'm going to die on this hill this year. Like, if you don't trade Jordan Clarkson, that's an outright mistake. And I don't care what Ryan Smith thinks about whether you should trade him or not. He's not coming back. You're not going to pay him all that money you're not paying him 70 plus million dollars that's just not the right decision for where the the organization's at and that's not my opinion really that's a pretty much a universal well-accepted thought that it doesn't make sense for them to re-sign him at that number at a number that in my opinion he deserves to be paid based on what he's done yeah so to me it's like yeah you do need to play these guys and you do need develop to develop guys but I also think when you're inside of 20 days to the deadline, like there is a lot of basketball to be played there. But that's where I say, why is NAW getting four minutes? Is he nursing something and you don't want to put him on the injury report? Is he, is he, has he done something to just fall out of favor somehow, even though I don't even know how that's possible on this team? Like when you're not even playing for championships and there's not that much on the line, you're just well, developing. But I also think that's why you're playing Talon Horton Tucker. I think you're you're playing him to showcase his value. I think when you look at guys like Rudy Gay, the only explanation for Rudy Gay getting significant mm-hmm. rotational minutes is you're trying to showcase him in trade to show that he has Fast. some ability left. Like yeah. you're not playing you're not playing Rudy Gay because you believe he gives you the best opportunity to win. And if you do, you, Will Hardy should be fired for that because they, they, there, there's nobody that has watched this team play that thinks that Rudy Gay gives you the best opportunity to win. I, I, I have not. And hey, again, maybe I just don't know basketball, but I think when you look at guys like Rudy Gay, it's pretty clear he does not fit in this system well, look, and, and he is not getting his best use he's out. He's no Gordon Hayward, but he'll but do. He'll I do. Mean, you know what I mean? You, like, know. you know. So to me, I mean, it makes perfect sense as to why you would, why you would be playing him, but I... Yeah, this trade deadline needs to happen. And in and, and two minutes on this Rory Hachimura situation that everyone lost their mind about yesterday. <laughs> Dude, like the Jazz were never in on on Rui. That just was not ever going to be. Yeah, where a did fit. that where did that come from? That I the don't Jazz know. were one of the, the 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 first teams in on Rui Hachimura. Are you out of your goddamn mind? We told you the day that that news came out, the Jazz were not in on him. They're not going to pick up a questionable player who's had subpar performance that is going to need to be extended this season. Y'all feel me? That's not who you're going to bring in to play power forward for you. So I I think it was very clear from the beginning they were not in on that. It makes perfect sense for the Lakers. They don't need him to be a star. Frankly, if he gives them 10 points and 7, 8 rebounds a night, they're going to be a much better team for it. So I think he's a great fit for the, the Lakers. I don't think he's a good fit at all for the Jazz. And... The thing that's so funny about like the Jordan Clarkson conversation, I think it's awesome that nobody is reporting that, oh, hey, he's going he's gonna to re-sign with the Jazz. I think everybody is acutely aware that when he, when he opts out this summer, he will not re-sign with the Jazz. And my guess is that they will wind up trading him. Yeah, I mean, we we have talked about this for weeks on end now that he told them I'm not going to talk about an extension because <laughs> it, it, it will cost me money to do that. And you're not talking about a little bit of money. You're talking about between 20 and 30 million dollars in total comp if he signs an extension today with the Jazz that he is just leaving 20 to 30 million dollars on the table. Yeah, that's insane money. And the Jazz are not in a position to offer him. I don't even think you could justify paying him 60 million dollars listen it's one of two things like the reality is you're either going to trade him and get some value back or he's going to hit the open market right you want to talk about gordon hayward this is the same conundrum you were in with gordon hayward yes it was let's not sugarcoat it right gordon hayward averaged in that last year like we told you 21 points i think it was that we said and you didn't want to pay him dennis Lindsay. now i know Dennis Lindsay's long gone, different different front office. We're in yeah. a different world now, right, as far as the Jazz are concerned. But funny, same situation, right? We all love Jordan Clarkson. He's everyone's All-American. He's a sweetheart. The owner of the team, Mr. Utah, 
tweeted about Jordan Clarkson and not trading him, and he tweeted about Joe Ingles and not trading him, right? But the reality is you're not going to sign this guy to that kind of of deal, and he's not going to give you a team-friendly deal. So that's why I say when I see, um, you know, big names like, you know, Mark Stein out there or any of the names that you want to look at talking about, hey, well, everyone's basically open, you know, they're open for business on basically everybody except Laurie and Walker, that does make perfect sense. But I agree with you. It's funny. No one's talking about Jordan Clarkson. And why is that? Because he's he's going to hit free agency. Like, he's going to yeah. do that. And I think this hesitancy around trading for him, I think is proper, and I think it's correct, unless you're that those three teams that are going to compete for uh, a Larry O'Brien trophy this year. And I also think this is why they're struggling to get a first-round pick for Jordan. I mean, it, it he is going to opt out, and he is going to get paid. And I don't, I don't believe that a contender is going to pay Jordan Clarkson $60 million. But if you're a contender, and this has always been my thing, I agree, you're not going to pay the guy $60 million if you're a contender, but that's not the ask. Danny's not asking you to pay sixty million dollars. Danny's asking you to pay for half a season. No, but but I, if you trade for Jordan Clarkson, mm -hmm. and let's say my, Miami comes up a lot, I think Atlanta would love to have him. Let's say Milwaukee. So you trade for Jordan Clarkson, you can make that deal work. You you know salaries, etc. You don't have the cap space to resign him over the summer. Are you really going to commit? 60, 70 million dollars to Jordan Clarkson for three years. He's going to wind up getting a deal from a second tier team who's going to overpay to bring him in. My name is Luca. I, and I think that's exactly what's going to happen. I, I, it, it'll be interesting to see. Like Dallas is very interesting because Dallas has a lot of needs. It's why Dallas is interested in guys like Malik Beasley. Mm -hmm. um, I, they, they need, like Milwaukee, absolutely should be interested in Jordan Clarkson and Malik Beasley, and I know they want Malik Beasley. I've heard that repeatedly because they need perimeter shooting. Yet, you're not going to extend Jordan Clarkson in the summer even if you do trade for him. It doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're the Cleveland Cavaliers, you need Jordan Clarkson. That's the guy you need off the bench. And by the way, are you really paying... 60, 70 million dollars for a six man because that's how 99% of the NBA values Jordan Clarkson. Mm -hmm. The Utah Jazz are that one team that believes Jordan Clarkson should be starting. And I'm telling you now, he's a six man on, it's, it's set on any championship team. He's a six man. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I, I think that it is, it is very telling the conversation's taking place across the league right now. I just think it's this this dynamic around Clarkson is so interesting to me because I, I get it. Giving up a first-round pick for half a season with JC as a championship contender, I get it. Like, that's not great basketball business, right? Like, if you just said, okay, hey, w w you know, it's going to take a first-rounder, you know, to go ahead and get this six-man who's going to come off the bench and give us 20, maybe even 30 on any given night, mm -hmm. right? That's not great basketball business, but... I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm on an island on this one. I just feel like if I'm Milwaukee or I'm Brooklyn, let's say, or I'm any of these teams that are like right there and need just a little more to get over the top, I feel like if I said, "Hey, hey, give me a first round pick and here's a Larry O'Brien trophy," you're doing that. I think Brooklyn would be a phenomenal fit for Jordan Clarkson. Right? Like, like it is. It that's a. That's one of those deals that's absolutely a no-brainer. And, and you're telling me that if he went to Brooklyn, let's just say, as an example, and we're not saying that he's going to Brooklyn, but just as an example, if he went to Brooklyn and he had all this success and he won a championship and then he hit free agency, you're telling me that, that the Nets wouldn't have a better chance to, to re-sign him? I mean, come on, dude. Like, let's not, let's not play silly. The guy wants to win, but he also wants to be paid. So that's why I say... I get it for 99% of the league. It doesn't make sense. Yep. But I maintain my opinion is for those couple of teams, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Jesus Christ destroys Marxism, which you got to change that name. Uh, the reports have said they will have enough to pay him by next summer. There are no reports that have said he they'll have enough to pay him by next summer because reports don't say that. They're going to have cap space. It's not a matter of, oh, the Jazz won't have the cap space. They're going to have the space. But you're a rebuilding team. You're going to pay a 31, about to be 32-year-old, 
seventy million dollars in non championship in a non championship window. Come on, that you're saying that's what because he's going to get a. I think he's going to get offers between twenty two and twenty four million dollars next summer in free agency. And by the way, the second half of his comment is even more. Jordan Incorrect. is open and understands the business and wants to work a deal with Utah. Nobody that's has not true. Nobody has reported that because that's not the case. That's not the case. Don't play intramurals, brother. Jordan Clarkson has never said, "Yeah, I'm I'm going to wait till the summer." And so let me get this right: you're a pending free agent, the last contract of your career, likely, and you're telling people that, "Hey, yeah, I'm just going to stay here in Utah and I'm gonna I'm going to negotiate a contract with the Jazz." I understand it's a business, uh, but I'm going to stay in Utah. <laughs> Guy, he's, that's not what he said ever, anywhere. Jordan is open and understands the business, wants to work a deal with the Utah Jazz. No. He's never said that. Never, not one time. In fact, it's quite the opposite. He knows the business of the league, and that's why he's going to get paid. Which is why he said he's open to a trade to a contender. But all due respect. And he's essentially asked to be traded to a contender. Yeah. I mean, I, it's stuff like this that wrecks NBA like there <laughs> where do you even these get Rui Hachimura reports this is the perfect example of this it's Twitter guy who's like oh the Jazz are first in on Rui Hachimura no because they were not garbage. no they were not and we told you as much on this show yeah to at least use common sense apply common sense to this comment right here yeah it, it makes no sense uh, Lewis says, Monty, there are so many non PG 13 comments that can come from uh, that pounding his. Yeah, hmm, yeah. there is. I, I know. I would agree with that. Yeah. Uh, Mark uh, Hale says, the Jazz have too many guards to play everybody. I would agree they do. They are very guard heavy. Me and my nephew saw Dax Milne and his quote unquote girlfriend while standing in line for food at the game. Nice. <laughs> nice. I like it. Uh, Hip says, there are more upset about how he left people are more upset about how he left but so you're upset about a blog post that leaked early so that had nothing to do with gordon <coughs> by the way <coughs> so you'll remember gordon hayward was going to the celtics gordon hayward penned a blog to say essentially say goodbye and hey here's what i'm doing and it was published early um and you that's what you're upset about <sighs> What, are you really six years later? You, you still are upset about you that. You know what people are saying, though. They're saying, "Hey, it was his blog post, his problem." Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it wasn't. Do you really think a these guys write their own blog posts, and b do you think they really run their own blogs? Uh, Lewis says, "Any W with time will be a person to watch out for." Agreed. I think he's a bench guy. I think he's a guy off your but bench. He's solid, I don't bro. know he's that solid. he is, but I don't think he ever projects to be an NBA starter. No, I don't I know don't. that he's a starter, but but there's listen, the teams that win championships have to have a good bench. You have to have that guy that comes off the bench and makes a difference. Yeah. Uh Anton says, I think Bronny can go to any college he wants to. All I have to do is pick up the phone. Why are people uh, so why does this matter? This is it, it, apparently you say people are all pissed about this. I say Yeah, they're upset for a couple of reasons. I mean, people People, one, are not amused that that Bronny has basically a fast track or an easy button to go to any school he wants. And to that, I say, you're just, that's a, that's a you problem because that's how athletes work. I mean, No, the, to that, I say, go learn to play basketball then. Go be the basketball player that Bronny is and you too can go to any school you want. Pay for your kid to get LeBron's DNA and then train his ass off and have knee surgery and go through it. I why do we hate successful people so much? I at this I don't understand. Uh Anton says LeBron could call Nike in Oregon and Bronny would go to Oregon starting quarterback. Well okay, great. What is this a problem though? Well, I think Anton is laughing about this. I don't think Anton's actually mad about it, but I do think there are people who are salty about it. I think that yeah, people don't like, you know, people But this is Gordon Hayward. You you there is not somebody in this chat or on this planet. Certainly not in this state who would say, no, I wouldn't have done what Gordon did. Okay, tell me how you would have handled Gordon Hayward leaving to the Boston Celtics differently. NBA free agency is a process, man. And I, I, to me, I would have done the exact same thing. That's life-changing money. He'll never have to worry about him breaking his leg. His money's guaranteed. 120 plus million dollars. Mm -hmm. You're saying no to that. 
When the um, Jazz said to him, Matt, go, go test the market. When the Jazz said to Gordon Hayward and restricted free agency, yeah, we just don't believe that. Yeah, we don't think there's a market out there for you. Go ahead. You understand what restricted free agency is, right? You get that, right? Hey, it, go test the market. If you get an offer, we get the chance to match it. Why like, would you allow him to do that? And then once you did, you know, like re-sign him in restricted free agency, did you really think he wasn't going to take that personally? Um, and then the kid from Indianapolis, you don't think wants to go play in Boston where Larry Bird played? And if you take Larry now. out of it, it's the Boston Celtics, bro. Yeah. Like, with all due respect. Yep. Uh, Tanner wants to know uh, if Jesse Harsh asked Dax if they're still friends with Zach. Yeah, that's the first thing that would come to my mind. Uh, Eric yes. Hawk says, why are Jazz fans mad at Gordon? One, the manner in which he left, not that he left, kept the Jazz in free, agent, free agency hostage for 72 hours. So again, I'm just asking you, what would you have done differently? Johnny, please. That's the process in the NBA, man. That's the that's the process. I, I like how I like how the 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 idea is he kept them hostage for 72 hours. Bro, you got guys out here keeping organizations quote hostage for months on end. Like 72 hours? Like really? And by the way, come on now. Come uh, on. A, they knew the Jazz knew what was going on in those 72 hours. They, there was no keeping them hostage. <laughs> they knew he was going to Boston. Keep they it knew real. for likely, they knew the day that season ended that he was not coming back. And then when he got his contract from Boston, do you really think they just don't talk to the Jazz? Or do you think like the Jazz knew what was happening? Yeah. There was no hostage taking. Yeah. And by the way, he didn't make it official for if it was 72 hours. I don't remember exactly. Should he make it official before he puts pen to paper or before all the details are worked out? No. Nah. Come on. Serious, I, like, are you being serious? Like, you you welcome back Darren Williams with round applause. <laughs> Which I thought was hilarious, The bro. guy that sent Jerry Sloan into retirement. <laughs> you, you gave him a standing ovation. You don't... And by the way, the, the, speaking of John and Carl, do we just forget who Carl Malone is as a human being? Wow. Oh, and the fact that he went and signed with the Lakers and tried to to snatch Kobe's wife? Like, we just um, forget all that. Oh, but it was stocked in the Malone. What are you talking about? Uh, we have to play JC to squeeze out any value he has left in the trade market. His expiring contract is not something exciting for a new team. No, I think it's a problem. I, I, think, it's a, I think it's a problem. Uh, Robert Lambert said, I'm not sure I understand Jake's take on Clarkson. He says he deserves to be paid $70 million-ish, but at the same time, we should trade him. Why not wait and pay him and keep him if he deserves the money? Uh, that's not what I'm saying, dude. Not at all. I think the issue is with Jordan Clarkson, if you're the Utah Jazz, do you want to pay a 71-year-old guy or a 31-year-old guy who's going to be 32? You want to pay that guy $70 million for three years, and by the time he's done, he'll be in his age 35 season. His market value is that. You need to just understand that. That is what he could go to free agency and get paid by another team in the league, right? I'm not saying they should pay him. I am in team trade JC. That's where I'm at. You should trade him because his contract is expiring. What what I'm a little different on, just in my opinion, and my thought is that I think there are select few teams where it makes sense to give up that first round pick that you might have to go ahead and get a rental in Jordan Clarkson for half a season to bolster your team for a playoff run and really for a championship run. That's where I think for like two to four teams that makes sense. For 99% of the league, dude, 99% of the league is hoping that that the Jazz don't trade JC and he hits free agency because then, I think so. then they can get after Buddy and say, hey, we'll, we'll, we got cap space. We'll, oh, they're paying you 75, let's say. Well, we're happy to bump that to 77. Right, and there's going to be this bidding war, and Jordan's going to benefit from that. So I'm saying, hey, the Utah Jazz are essentially a rebuilding team that needs to be really smart with their cap and really effective with the trades they make. And re-signing someone who's in his 30s at the backside of his career, who's clearly not a fit for a rebuilding team, doesn't make a whole lot of sense.
That's where I'm at on it. Yeah, I think you're crazy. If you're a Jazz fan and you, and you want the Jazz to roll the dice on Jordan Clarkson in free agency, you're crazy. For such a smart person, you really are lost, aren't you? Uh, that I don't understand because you're going to be pissed either way. If they don't trade him and they gamble on free agency and he walks, you're going to hate Jordan Clarkson, I would guess. I mean, because you unrealistically hate Gordon Hayward. So I would assume that you will unrealistically hate Jordan Clarkson. If they trade him and he does not resign this summer, at least you got a first round pick for him, I would assume. Like, I, this is, these are those situations, man. I don't know. I feel like there's a little saltiness in the air this morning. Well, yeah. I mean, I think, I that- mean, I think that there clearly is. Mercy. I think that people see Gordon Hayward and all of a sudden they turn into villains, like I, I which I just don't get. Yeah. Uh, Anton says, I'm not salty about it. Bronny is a hell of a basketball prospect, and the fact that he's LeBron's son doesn't hurt. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Anton, he, you're not, I get it. You're not salty about it. I understand, dude. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Alex Cooley says, I have a feeling JC isn't going to get traded and he just leaves him free agency. My. Again, I will tell you every time I've talked to a source about this, he is going they are they are going they are trying to trade him. The issue is that they cannot currently with over 2 weeks to go before the trade deadline, they haven't been able to get a first round pick for him. Yeah. And I think they're they're probably a lot more focused on Malik Beasley because Beasley is the hottest guy on the trade market. Yeah. I don't think their trades are out there to be made. I mean, the Lakers deal with Washington proves that. And there are teams that are going to be more aggressive than others. I think the Lakers are one of those. The Phoenix Suns, I'm told, don't want to give up a first-round pick right now. Well, then you're probably not going to make a deal. The Suns are a team that needs to make a deal, at least. A deal, at least. And you, one, I think it's a little nervy that we have not gotten much of an injury update on Devin Booker. That's a little That's a little scary to me. Mm-hmm. Um and I agree with what Monty Williams, and I, I think I even got kind of ass chewed on this. When Monty Williams says it's his fault, I overused him. I didn't give him rest. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And I think it's, it is one of those things. And look at that. Look at what Mark Stein is reporting. I think Mark Stein listens to the Monty show. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Mark Stein's reporting the Suns have started to assess their future without Chris Paul. (laughs) You're welcome. Um, They have identified Terry Rozier, Emmanuel Quickly, and Fred Van Vliet as uh, potential trade targets. So they're not, yeah. So all that means, what that really, that has nothing to do with Chris Paul. You know what that has to do with? Nothing to do with Chris Paul. That has to do with new ownership change. Hey, we're not, this is not the year. We're not going to rush book back. We're going to play for next year. We're going to be smart yes. about this. We're going to be patient and we're going to work this out. And and see, that's what I'm telling you guys. Like, don't get hung up on Ruri Hachimura garbage. That yeah. is, don't stop. Like, just let that go, man. Those are all smoke screens, like, dude. Like, I'm telling you guys, Phoenix and Atlanta are the two teams that if the, if the Jazz are going to hit a home run, right? Hear me clearly because I don't want this to get twisted when trades go down. If the Jazz are going to hit a home run and get an A-plus rating on this on this trade deadline, the Hawks and the Suns are the two teams that they need to lay down in bed with because those three, all three of these organizations have initiatives and goals that they can help each other with, and the money works. So to me, it, when you start getting, hey, our future without Chris Paul tweets— that kind of tells you where that organization is at on top of the ownership thing, on top of the book injury. It makes sense, man. Well, and I think we talked about this at length a couple of weeks ago now, that Chris Paul is is a guy that they recognize as a problem. And what I think what, what this tells you is, is exactly how many times have we talked about this related to Chris Paul that they're concerned about Devin Booker's long-term future with the with the Suns. Yeah, as they should be. And I think that this is why we talk about it so much because I think Book is a guy that's looking at becoming an L.A. Laker. And I think Devin Booker sees the window in time opening up for him to go to L.A. And I think he sees the opportunity um, to become the next Kobe in L.A. Yeah, And it makes perfect sense. And I think that that's what the Suns are focusing on. I think Devin Booker is a guy that is... 
he is an elite talent waiting to happen. And I don't know that it ever happens in Phoenix. And Fred Van Vliet does not help him grow. No. And I think that the Suns very wisely are starting to... Malik Beasley does. I can tell you that. I think Malik right? Beasley does help him grow. And I think what the Suns are recognizing now is if it hasn't closed already, their championship window is closing quickly. Very quickly. And they need to be aggressive now if they want to win a championship. But... Then again, I think their new owner is going to come in and spend a whole lot of money. But this and is James why James Jones has been good. I mean, James he's been Jones excellent. has been everything you want. So to me, I think their head is in the right place. But I'm telling you this, the ownership changeover thing that's happening behind the scenes is a bigger deal than I think most people realize. Like you're talking about a culture shift in the building. You're talking about... A, an end of what was one of the worst the circus yeah like the cir like you know yeah the circus like the drama i mean it truly is the end of what was one of the worst ownership you know situations in all of yes. sports and and to me if i'm devin booker i gotta i gotta give this thing a real hard look because i gotta know hey is this new owner really going to come in and spend money? Or is this new owner really going to come in and try to make money for himself? Yeah. Like, I got to know that. Yep. All of our Utah Jazz Talk on the Monty Show presented by Quick Quack Car Wash. The best place to get a wash. Where did I go yesterday? Well, duh, I went to Quick Quack Car Wash with my guy. Okay, guys, I'm going to tell you the secret to impressing my neighbors, the wife, co-workers, you name it. I just swing by Quick Quack. It seriously takes two minutes, and people can't stop, won't stop checking me out. Getting a clean car is definitely my best life hack. Kids are messy, camping's dirty, but my truck sure isn't. The greatest line ever uttered on a commercial on this show. Can't stop, won't stop hey checking guys. me out. Hey, guys. I love it. We went to hey Quick Quack in the district yesterday on our way home from the crib to the crib. From We'll see from the Maverick Center to the... Anyway, we went to a Quick Quack Car Wash at the district. We were in and out in five and a half minutes. Um, there, were, We were about seventh in line, and the car came out looking great. And what did I get? I told him again, hey, I need a muddy duck. She takes the marker, and what did she say? Hey, welcome to Quick Quack. Puts my plate in, comes back and says, hey, anything else we can get for you? Yeah, hey, can I get a muddy duck? Yeah, no problem at all. Writes it on the window, waves at the guy. They talk a little bit. Sprays off the front of the car, sprays off the back it's, of the it's car. It's the hand signal routine, right? Hey, hey, guy, dude, hey, check this out. He's yeah. got a muddy duck. Yeah, pimp my ride. Yeah. Uh, but the best part is in the tunnel, They when you get a muddy duck, which basically means they give you double the water and double the soap, this big brush comes down, and it's a roller brush, and it sprays water out of the middle of the roller brush. Pump the real. It, dude, it's so cool. And it just the Pump car the is real. immaculate after that. It's it, it's amazing. Go to Quick Quack Car Wash because the people are great. You don't if you if you're not a member, I don't know what you're thinking. Uh, you should be a member of Quick Quack Car Wash. I pay twenty one ninety nine a month. I get their best wash, and I can go one time or a hundred times mm -hmm. at Quick Quack Car Wash. Who presents all of our NBA and Utah Jazz and, talk. And speaking of which, if you're not a member of the show, a couple of things happened yesterday that we can't talk about yet. Oh, my God. But you might want to be a member of the show. Dude, I am so stoked. Our March 10th event last night. Something happened yesterday. We have a name, a name that you guys a know. A massive name. Somebody that you know will be there. So and I'm talking about a name. We are having my uh, 50th birthday bash here at the Maverick Center mm -hmm. on March 10th. And it's a, a Grizzlies game. You're going to have a chance to win all kinds of prizes. You're going to get to hang out with two big name football players in the state that I'm really stoked about. And if you are a member of this show, you are guaranteed entry. Mm -hmm. Chris Karn, who was the first member of the show, Program. is the first guy that's got a free pass into the event. Yep. But I will say now... With the name that we got, you guys are going to want to be there. It, 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 I mean, he is one of the biggest name athletes in the state of Utah. Yep. And it, I cannot wait. Yep. Huge names coming to our 50th birthday bash. What's up, big bro? Big, what's up, big bro? Big prizes. Big names. It is going to be remarkable. The link is right there to become a member of our program. It, it not only bro, bro. gets you entry... It not only gets you an exclusive video every day, but it gets you access to our members-only chat on Instagram, the Monty Group, 
members only chat that has been unbelievable. I had a great time chatting with everybody during the Jazz game last night during the NFL playoffs over the weekend. Tanner Plummer having like monumental, you know, evolutionary type development from puberty to manhood by embracing the super soaker name in the chat with all of the members supporting him being the super soaker. I mean, unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's all I'll say. You get all of that for $9.99 a month. You can cancel it anytime, but trust me, the, the Instagram chat is worth its weight in gold. 